out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Yeah, they put the knife on Jay. They put the knife on Jay in front of everybody just to let you know this is what they'll do when you get smart with them, when you oppose them, when you go against them. They put the knife on the man, and the man turn, try to turn around and say, man, I ain't had no knife, and they pushed him up against the wall there and say, get on your knees, get on your knees, put your hand behind your head, you know, and if you don't do that, then they're going to shoot you. So he mad, he angry, so he goes straight to his knees, put his hand behind his head, they take his arm, bend it all behind his uh, back, cuff him up, you know what I'm saying, pick him up, drag him out there, I ain't see him again. I ain't see him again, you know what I'm saying, on Wallace Ridge at all. You know, I ended up running into him years later, you know, and he was telling me, man, when they when they got him in the back, man, they beat him, you know, they gave him the fake charge, he had to stay up there a couple of extra years for that charge. When you get a knife charge up there, which they eventually did to me as well, down the line, I'll tell y'all about it, or I have said something about it to y'all, but when you get a knife charge up there, that's like 20 extra points on your, on your, on your point system. Your point system determines what prison you go on, what level you on. But when you get a knife charge, that's 20 extra points. So that may raise you up to the next level or the highest level. But the thing about it is, you have to you have to deal with them 20 points for two years. Two years, they don't the, the points don't come off for two years. If it's a weapon, if it's a knife, the points ain't coming off of your record for two years. So whatever state you're in, you're gonna have those 20 points. Even if your other points lower down, you probably gonna have to stay on the prison that you're at because of them 20 points for the next two years. So that's the type of games they was playing up there to ensure that they could keep bodies in themselves up there because they really did not have the criteria to uh, keep Wallace Ridge and Red Onion open because these are two major prisons in Supermax, but they're only supposed to be housing the, the most dangerous prisoners in the state of Virginia and the ones that's super out of control. They didn't even have enough people to fit that criteria because like I said, this wasn't the 90s or the 80s. You know, the prison violence has slowed down some. It still was violence in the prison, of course. It's always going to be because of the atmosphere, because of the nature of where you're at. But it wasn't like it was when I first came in, when it was just super out of control. It wasn't to that level. And that was when you needed all of these wallets, bitch, and red onion. But at this point, you didn't. But they had to create the criteria to put the bodies in these cells to keep these prisons open, to keep their economy going, to keep these people employed. So they won't have to go in the coal mines. You see what I'm saying? But you putting people in here that's straight racists. They're abusing black people. They're abusing Hispanic people. They're abusing their authority. They, man, they beating people literally to death. You know, they're just doing all types of crazy stuff up there. They're you had no, uh, seemingly like no way to get any help. You know, nothing you was doing was working. They had had several complaints. They had even had newspaper articles written on them. They had had um, all types of stuff and investigations supposed to have happened with Wallace Ridge and Red Onion during this time, and nothing stopped the production of, 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 of their. Uh, administration. They just kept hiring more people. The prison kept running and everything went on the same. When I Before I got up there, they were saying that before the years I got up there 2009, they even had um, the cattle prong nightsticks. We had the electrical shock on the end of it and they were shocking people, man. They was hitting people with the cattle prong. I was running into people who had big whelps on their face where the people that burnt their face with the uh, cattle prong on their arms, on their back, legs. Man, they was knocking out teeth, breaking ribs, breaking arms. Um, I mean, they was brutalizing cats up there, man. Really, really brutalizing cats up there. So when you get up there and you know these things and then you start seeing these things, it just changes your whole perspective of, of, about how to do time and how you're going to do time. You have to get in that frame of mind where you feel like, well, if this has going down, then if something come at me, I got to go all the way out because it may carry me all the way out, you know? So that's the frame of mind I was in. If anything came at me, I was going to defend myself to, you know, to the best of my ability. And whatever happened, happened. And I didn't care if it was an officer a convict or whatever. I wasn't I wasn't fit to be played with at this time because my mental state was already confused and, and, and mind boggled 
of what I'm seeing and what I'm witnessing. So I try to keep to myself while I was up there. I ain't do a whole lot of socializing, which I don't usually do anyway, but to certain people. But I was even more so in my, you know, you know, bag up there because of the things I was seeing. You know, um, yeah, and then the gangs, man. The gangs was vicious, man. It was vicious. And when I mean vicious was they was vicious against each other as well as other people. The, the, the administration was using them to, 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 to pull hits on people that they didn't like, you know, and by appeasing them, by, you know, going in other people's cell and shake them down. See, the gangs would tell them too then, they know you got like freak books, what we call freak books up there was uh, pornography books, you know. You might get books like called Black Video Illustrated where they got all of pictures of what's actually X-rated movies. It's just X-rated movies in the form of pictures. So dudes would, police would bring those in, sneak those in, sell them to inmates for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Inmates would get them and turn them around and resell them to other inmates for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. You know, make a profit on them or whatever. They may sell pages, each individual page to a dude, or they may sell a whole book. A book on the street that probably cost $12. They was getting it in the penitentiary, probably give an officer $100 to bring it in, and they probably sell it for $175, $150. You know, and dudes was buying because dudes was sex starved in there. So that's what was going on. So they may know somebody who may have purchased a whole lot of books and they got a whole lot of books in their cell. And the gang members would tell the CO to go confiscate the books and give them to him. They may sell you the books and then get the police to come confiscate the books from you and give them right back to them. And they resell them to somebody else. You see what I'm saying? And in turn for doing that. The, the officers would tell them, well, when one of these inmates I don't like get out of line or get out of pocket, then we want y'all to go send a, send a hit on them, go jump on them. So the police don't like you. You ain't not only got to worry about them, you got to worry about the gang members because they may send the gang members at you. You may be sitting down at the table minding your business and all of a sudden somebody just come up to you and pop off on you because they done sent a hit out on you. You see what I'm saying? And then you got to fight back. But while you trying to fight back, you got to worry about getting shot. They ain't aiming at him. They aiming at you. You see what I'm saying? So then the dog will come in. and It's just like a no-win situation, man. This is the craziness that's going on up there. So how do you function? How do you, you know what I'm saying, maintain your sanity amongst all of this chaos and confusion? See what I'm saying? That's what was going on up there. That's the type of compartmentalize you have to do in your mind. Like, mm, you have to get yourself prepared every day you step out of that cell to whatever's gonna go down. Who don't like you? Who beefing with you? What police looked at you funny? What which one of these guys, you know what I'm saying? And then they may not just like you just because of how you do your time or or or, or what you have that they don't have. You see what I'm saying? They was doing that up there. I know um or you might got a status, like you got a name. Like I was already in prison a long time. I'm already known. You see what I'm saying? So they may have new dudes that's trying to prove themselves as gang members and it depending on who the shot caller was in that gang, in the Bloods, the Crips, the GDs, or whatever, whoever the shot caller was, the, what type of integrity he had. Because he might send you on a dummy mission. He might see somebody like me or other dudes that have been down a while and got a reputation. He might say, well, uh, if you want to earn your stripes, man, go pop off on bank. You know, you got to pop off on him before the day out. You know what I'm saying? Or you going to take a violation. And the violation is they, 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 you know, have rules and regulations within their games. They may beat him, you know, for a certain amount of time or do something to him if he don't do whatever his orders are that he's being told to do. So they might tell him to come pop off on me. And unbeknownst to me, I'm out here cutting hell, man, my business, and dude just come swing on. You see what I'm saying? So this is how much on point you got to be up here. Or they may not like whatever you're doing. You may be the dude to run the parlay, and they want to take over the parlay in, in that uh pod or in that block. So they may send a hit to go get the parlay, man. They may tell the lower level game members, go, 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 go whoop him, man. Go jump on him because we want to get him out the block. You see? So this is the dynamics that's going on in there. This is the politics. I remember a white guy that was in there. And he he uh he was dealing with a, a black dude that was not a gang member, but they was running a parlay together. Where they you know I told y'all the parlay is when you bet on games and 
football, basketball, baseball, car races, whatever, and you bet a certain amount of money on these things, and if it's a sporting event like baseball, basketball, football, they have point spreads, and they give you the point spreads, and you bet on those, and you put down a certain amount of money, but you win a, a percentage way more than you put down. Like, if you put in a dollar, you win $10. You know, you put in $2, you win 20 so on and so forth. That's how it went, $4, 40 So, Dudes ran parlays in there, and you you know you you could make a lot of money running the parlays. There's a lot of drama to go with it. There's a lot of craziness, but dudes take that chance because of the simple fact of what they can gain. They feel like they're gaining more than they're losing, and they take that risk. But you also got to be willing to put some work in if you run the parlay, because dudes gonna play with your money, and dudes may you know buck on you, or dudes may try to rob you, or whatever. All of that goes along when when you're doing this. So that's understood. So like I say, the white boy was doing it because he probably had the business sense and he had the, the black dude as his partner because the black dude was the muscle. You know, if something pop off, he going to be the one to step on the front line and put that work in. So that's probably why he was partnering with him. Now, they was running the parlays in the block that I was in from the beginning of the time that I went in there. You know what I'm saying? They was always running the parlays. So I can remember being in there and... Um, they running the parlays, they running the parlays, but old boy was getting ready to go home. The black dude, he was getting ready to go home. His time was coming short. He had just did 19 years. He getting ready to get out, right? So he eventually got down to like it was about a week before he left. He was shuffling around money, doing this, doing that, and the third, and then he hollered at one of his homeboys and was trying to link his homeboy up with the white boy so he could just take over his role. But his homeboy really wasn't built like he was or didn't have the respect that he had. But he still was trying to pass that money on to his homeboy. So sure enough, he left. He went home. His homeboy was supposed to be the one there just, just taking down his spot. So the, the, the gang dudes, they they trying to get rid of him Because now they ain't really worried about all the backlash going to come from dude because old dude would go and he had some dudes that, that, that would back his hand as well. So they really ain't want them problems. But now with him gone, they feel like, you know, you know it's easy pickings. So they want to get rid of the white boy, and they want to get rid of the dude. You see what I'm saying? So I can remember the white boy, man. He just as docile as I don't know what. He don't bother nobody. If you look at him, man, he look like a straight nerd. He just a little frail dude, man. Don't weigh no more than like 155 pounds soaking wet. I can remember him just standing in the block part, man. And he minding his own business. Actually looking at a parlay ticket. Little tickets they pass out, no bigger than that. He's actually looking at the ticket, I guess, for the games that day. He's trying to check, see what's going on, see what the status is. And I can remember, man, this gang member, big dude, man. This dude was probably about 6'3", 6'4", um, probably about 220 pounds. And he had got an order to, to, to just take off on the old boy. Just take off on him. So, man, it was brutal, vicious, vicious, man. I seen that dude... Just standing right there, minding his business, looking at the ticket. And I seen old dude just walk up to him and just take off on him. Boom! Hit him in the face. Dude just fell like a log. Because he wasn't even anticipating the punch. And he just fell like a log. And when he fell and hit the ground, man, did you know this dude took and stomped him and was stomping his head, man, so hard. I literally had to turn my head, man, because I thought he was going to kill the boy. You know, I had to turn my head. His head was bouncing off the concrete. He stomped that boy about three or four times. Then he reached down and punched him in the face about two or three times before the police actually noticed him that was in the booth and turned around and said, burn! They hit an alarm when they get ready to shoot. They hit the alarm, cocked the gun and started shooting at him. Pow! Get down! Everybody get down! Pow! So when they do that, Everybody just in the block, no matter who you is, whether you're involved in the altercation or not, you got to get down on the ground, lay down, spread your arms out as far as you can, keep your face down to the ground, and spread your legs out, or you will get shot too. That's how they going. You're going to get shot too, whether you got anything to do with it or not. If you're not in that position when something pop off and they hit that alarm, then you're going to get shot as well. So they were shooting at him, shooting at him. He jumped down on the ground. They still shooting at him. You know, he tried to get close to the dude, the white boy, which the white boy laying down there shaking and stuff. I guess he wanted to get close to them because he didn't want the shots. You know, he felt like they didn't want to shoot him because he was already hurt. They run in there, man. When they when stuff like that happened too, they run in there. Uh, guns are blazing. They ready. They coming in there with nightsticks. They coming in there with the um, 
with the canine people with the dogs and stuff. They're going to let the dog go to bite you first. They're trying to act like that's what restrain you. So while the dog biting you, then they come jump on you and try to put the cuffs on you and telling you to stay still when the dog is biting you. How you going to stay still when the dog is actually biting me? You know, so that's their dynamics where they can keep beating you and stuff. Stay still. Stop. Like the same thing you see on the street. Stop resisting. Stay still. How? I'm getting bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting bit, man. You know, it just brutality went on like it was nothing, man. It was it was just common practice up there that when you start seeing all of these type of things, like I say, it changes something in you. And, you know, I looked at that dude, man, getting beat like that, man, for no reason. And I know in his mind, he never saw that coming. He never saw that coming. He never had a clue. And yet he ended up somewhere in the hospital trying to recover. Probably don't even remember what happened. He got, you know, beat so bad. You know, and all of this was just because, see what I'm saying? Just because the leader of that gang had wanted to get rid of him and said that. Now, the dude that was supposed to have been taking over for him, supposed to have been his partner, he ain't do nothing. He ain't do nothing. Now, had it been the dude that went home for that, he would have waged war against them for that. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what, the, that's what it calls for. When you in that type of business, that's what you got to do. You got, when something like that happened, you got to make your play. And you got to let it be known because if not, people going to walk all over top of you all the time now because you got a reputation for doing this and doing that. And then something pop off that you involved in and you don't handle your business, then it's, it's open season on It's open season on You see what I'm saying? So he was gone. So dude ain't do nothing. So once he ain't do nothing, then everybody knew what time it was. They 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 uh even told the dude to uh give up all the cigarettes and all the stuff, whatever he had. You know what I'm saying? That that was attached to the parlay. If he ain't want no work to get it all up, cause cause the white boy was gone, and that's what he did. That's what he did. And the white boy's sale partner, they told him when the people come to pack his stuff up, you better not pack up all of his property. All the stuff he got, leave that in there, keep it, you know, and that's probably what he did as well. You know. So dude not only got beat up, got brutalized, and went to the hospital. Probably whenever he came out or whenever he surfaced or wherever else they put him at, when he got out, he ain't have none of the stuff that he done earned the fruits of his labor from running the parlay because his seller done robbed him, you know, when packing up his property under the threat that he was going to get the business if he didn't. You see what I'm saying? This is what goes on in prison. Young fellas, y'all don't want to go to prison because you may just end up at Wallace Ridge. <laughs> And trust me, brother, it ain't no place you want to be. I can promise you that. Promise you, it is literally hell on earth. Believe that. And I'm telling you no lie. And I done been through some situations. I done seen some things in 33 years. But I'm telling you, I seen some of the most wicked, uh, corrupt, uh, crazy, uh, cynical things I've ever seen was up there in the mountains. You know, up there in the mountains, man, and they was getting away with everything that they was doing, like it was like it was legal, like it was legal, straight legal. You know, and the police, like I said, they treat you as if you're not human, especially if you're black. They talk racial craziness right in front of your face as if you're not black or as if you're not Hispanic. You know, they may be talking to me using the N word. Like they talk to their uh, uh, brother at home. They may be talking to a Hispanic using uh, racial slurs about Hispanic people right in their face as if they talking to their brother at home. You know, I can remember going in the office one time and I'm sitting there and, 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 and this young dude, young officer, man, young white guy, man, probably about, uh, man, maybe 20, 22 years old. He's sitting there talking to me about the Trayvon Martin case. Yeah, the Trayvon Martin case talking about how he, uh, uh, George Zimmerman, um, should have shot him. You know, he, he they trying to uh, get him or lock him up like he did something wrong. He should have shot him, man. That boy, that boy was up there up to no good. He was up there trying to rob a house or break in a house or something. I'm telling you, man, why would you be out there with a hoodie on in the neighborhood that you don't even live in? And I'm sitting there looking to him like, what? And I ain't really want to, you know, say nothing because I was getting upset, very upset, 
And I didn't even want the conversation to continue. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to leave. And every time I try to leave you something, but do you understand me though? Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, and I'm looking at him like, man, <laughs> bro, you better leave me alone, man. You know, and this is just the stuff that you have to deal with. You have to uh, 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 harden yourself to these type of situations because they're going on all around you all the time. And it ain't nothing you can do about it, but get yourself in trouble. But make yourself a target. That's all you could do. That's all you could do. They had the upper hand up there. It's like I say, it was just super racist. It was only one. I only knew of one black person that worked up there. One black person, man. And that was the rec supervisor. And the crazy part about that is he was rich. He was rich, but he was from that place. He was rich because his sons was actually NFL players. Banky special. Yeah, pure deliciousness. Pure deliciousness, man. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love. My family love me. And that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.